Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-1933. Item Number SCP-1933 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-1933 is to be kept in a standard low-security cell equipped with basic furnishings. It is to be provided with 2 liters of Irish whiskey, 500 milliliters of double cream, no less than 48% fat content, 25 grams of powdered sugar, and 20 milliliters of refined vegetable oil, on a daily basis. As SCP-1933 is unwilling to engage in basic hygiene, it is to be forcibly stripped and showered by Level 3 personnel on a weekly basis, and its beard shaved and nails clipped on a monthly basis. Its soiled clothing is to be considered highly flammable, and is to be incinerated as a fire hazard. Description SCP-1933 is an obese middle-aged Caucasian male in a constant state of moderate to severe alcohol intoxication. SCP-1933's bodily fluids, including both intracellular and extracellular fluids, consist entirely of a substance identical in composition to the alcoholic beverage known as Irish cream. This substance adequately fulfills the functions of the fluids it replaces in SCP-1933's tissues despite the fact that it renders normal biochemical processes essential to life impossible. Foundation scientists have been unable to determine how it manages this. SCP-1933 subsists on a diet of cream, Irish whiskey, sugar, and refined vegetable oil, the basic ingredients of most commercially produced varieties of Irish cream. It prefers to supplement its diet with small amounts of various herbs and flavorings, usually coffee, but these are not essential to its survival. It is incapable of digesting anything that is not a standard ingredient of Irish cream, including Irish cream which has been prepared beforehand. SCP-1933 will display effects consistent with acute malnutrition if its blood alcohol content significantly falls below or exceeds the range of 15-20%, the typical ABV of Irish cream. SCP-1933's bodily fluids are safe for human consumption if intake is limited to 25 milliliters or less within 24 hours. If the subject exceeds this limit, there is a significant risk that all their bodily fluids will be transformed into Irish cream. This substance does not fulfill the functions of the fluids it replaces, as it does in SCP-1933, as such, it is instantly fatal. The probability that a subject's bodily fluids will be transformed into Irish cream increases by approximately 5% for each additional ml of SCP-1933's bodily fluids consumed. It is not known if the bodily fluids of SCP-1933's victims would have the same anomalous effects as SCP-1933's bodily fluids if they were to be consumed. Prior to containment, SCP-1933 was chronically homeless sleeping either on the street or in derelict buildings, wearing a Santa Claus suit at all times, stealing money with which to purchase the specific items of food and drink necessary for its survival, and collecting its bodily fluids in bottles. It would attempt to break into people's homes between 2300 hours December 24th, Christmas Eve, and 5 o'clock December 25th, Christmas Day, and place crudely wrapped bottles of its bodily fluids alongside other wrapped presents, with the intention that they would later be unwrapped and subsequently consumed. SCP-1933 claims that this activity was motivated by a benevolent desire to give people presents, and refuses to acknowledge that its bodily fluids are fatal if consumed in large quantities. It has not been determined whether it is genuinely unaware and unwilling to accept that this is the case, or whether it is trying to conceal malicious intentions, however. The general consensus among Foundation staff who have studied SCP-1933 is that the former is more likely. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did, please subscribe, like, and share it around. 
If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.